Introducing Paula Rittenhouse, First Lady of 3C USA, wife to Mike Rittenhouse and mother to three. 3C USA, please welcome Pastor Paula Rittenhouse. Let's give the Lord a good hand today. Shout out praise to him. Amen. Turn to someone and give them a high five and say, it's going to be great today. Now turn, in, turn to the other one and say, are you ready? All right. just want to pray before we start. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the many, many um, people that are here today. Lord, to be challenged, God, to be who you've called us to be. Lord, I pray that you use me, God, as your vessel today, that you speak through me, Lord, that I'll only say, God, the things, God, that you desire me to stay, say today. Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to jump right into it. I want to just honor uh, Pastor Mike. We're tag teaming today. And uh, all throughout the conference, you've been hearing a lot of different things. And uh, so I'm just going to be uh, recapping on some of those things. But uh, Pastor Mike, he is the visionary. Everybody knows Pastor Mike, you know, he's the visionary. And back in uh, our Pittsville days, when we started back, um, we started off with 53 people there. And uh, that was counting a lot of people that were just curious on the first day and then didn't come back after that. But we started, we started with 53 people, and, uh, and then we had just a few, you know, not very many chairs. And so that was one of the things that Pastor Mike um, did back in those days of Pittsville. He would say, you know what, we got we to gotta buy more chairs. We got to see them as uh, that they're coming, even though they're, they're not here yet. We got to buy more chairs. So that would be a thing that we would say, you know, throughout each month, like, okay, we're going to buy 20 more chairs. Okay, we're going to buy them. And we, once we got into here, we haven't bought chairs um, in a long time, probably in about about three years ago. Maybe we bought some for Dulles and, and all that. But um, this, uh, about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, Justin uh, messaged uh, Mike and said, there is um, some chairs that would uh, match our chairs that are um, on sale. And we can get at a good price. It's 140 chairs. And Pastor Mike said, we're, huh, 148. And he said, we need that to be able, because our goal is 500, and we don't have 500 chairs. And so I just see that as the, the dreamer. And you can see last night, I'm like, Lord, I thank you that he pushed us to say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to purchase this. You know, we're not going to worry about the money or anything else. We're going to purchase these chairs. And last night, almost every chair was filled. Amen. And so I'm, I'm thankful for the, the visionary that he is, the one that pushes us when we don't even like it, right? Um, but, but he makes us, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for, for him being that dreamer and, um, and that. So today I want you to say, tell a story. Look at the person next to you say, tell a story. Now I want you to say, I'm going to tell my story. And so if I went around here today, I'm sure that you guys could tell me some stories about your family, right? Uh, maybe some stories that we don't really want to hear, right? But, um, but when I think about family stories, there's uh, some certain things that I, I will say that only my family will know the story because I've, we've told the story, right? So if I say the words Olive Garden to my kids, that's what you're going to hear. Now, I'm not telling that story. But that's a story that we always laugh about. And then I would, there's a story about a cat that I would say, and they would laugh because it's a story within our family, right? And then there's a tree story about just being on top of a tree, and I'll just leave it there. And Jared was underneath, and then some things happened. Uh, but there's some stories that every family has that they could tell, amen? And so with that, I want you to think about not those crazy stories that we were just talking about, but what is your story that you would tell that Jesus has done in your life? And that's the story when we leave here, we need to make sure this year we tell the story of what Jesus has done in our life, how he's redeemed us, how he's restored us. Amen? And I would just want to, I was thinking yesterday about when Pastor Charnay, I believe, was saying about the model. We've all been talking about models, and uh, we have an awesome model to follow. Pastor Burton Charnay, amen? And uh, let's give them a hand. I know that they're probably watching or we're so grateful for the model that they are, you know, that we, could, we model after them. And we went to Bogota and we saw Pastor uh, um, um, Claudia and uh, Pastor Cesar there, and, and they're modeling after that. So it's very important that you see that, that somebody in front of you is modeling. And, you know, and then last night as Pastor Charnay preached, you know, I, 
I, I'm just modeling after that. I'm like, I'm like Lord, you know, just anoint her. I'm, I, I, I'm praying for her. And then to see all those uh, people come to know the Lord, you know, it's, it's an awesome thing to have a model, a role model that we can model after, that, that our family can model after. Amen? And so, um, so I wanted to say last night, as we saw all those, and I didn't get the count of how many came to know the Lord, but one, um, one little girl, as I, as I was uh, glancing around to see if anybody was raising their hand, I saw one little girl that's been here since birth, and I believe that she's uh, about eight, eight or nine years old. And I, I saw her raise her hand like that, and I saw her dad look down at her like, wow. You know, and, uh, and, uh, and a few, on the second call, she came up. Maddie, are you here? She's waving at me. Stand up, Maddie. <laughs> Maddie, how old are you? Eight? Nine? Eight? Nine. And I saw her come down and, uh, I'm not going to get emotional yet, um, and just the tears coming down her face. Maybe I will. <sighs> I've got some somewhere. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it just reminded me of 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 myself. So grief. Okay. All right. Of myself at 7. Uh, I remember the day so so vividly. Um of being a child that she's been in church, she's been in there her her parents have taught uh, back with the kids like 10 years. So she's been raised in that. But last night, something tugged at her heart that said, this is my night. So it's important that we model in front of them. And so I saw her as as her and her dad stood there, and she repeated that, and the tears rolling down her face. So I went and said to her, this night, you shall never forget. So if for no other reason, last night was important for Maddie because she's going to be a world changer. Okay, enough of that. (laughs) All right. The book of Joel. Everybody say the book of Joel. I've got to get out of the personal stuff. All right. Um, When we went to Bogota, Pastor Claudia talked on... um, uh, this is a 2020 is a year of restoration. I just, if you're writing notes or taking notes, write that on there. 2020 will be a year of restoration. This will be a decade of restoration. And as you're as you're sitting here and you're thinking, I want you to think about those relationships, those things that need to be restored. And I want you to begin to let your faith grow, let your faith be activated to believe that God will restore what has been torn apart. Amen. In the book of Joel, uh, after I came home, I just read, read through that and, and uh, wrote down some different things. Uh, it's, it was difficult days. It was an entire land of Judah suffered under massive locust plague. Locust. Anybody like a locust? It, the crops failed. The livestock died. The people perished. God's judgment was upon the people. Everybody say, now that's a bad day. Joel 1.4 says, after the cutting locusts finishing eating, finished eating the crops, the swarming locusts took what was left. After them came the hopping locusts and then the stripping locust too. That's a lot of different locusts. And in case you don't know what a locust looks like, I ask them to put up just a thing. I want you to get a visual. This is what was happening. Swarming locusts, locusts everywhere. Do we have that? Okay. All right, so you got the, the picture of what was happening in those days. Locusts everywhere, swarming and eating everything. Okay, Joel 1.12. The grapevines had dried up and the fig trees have withered. The pomegranate trees, the palm trees, the apple trees, all the fruit trees have dried up. And the last part said, and the people's joy had dried up with them. Now, we don't want that, right? So I just wanted you to paint a picture of what's going on in this book of Joel. And do you have that, that picture of a withered tree? I just want you to get the visuals of that, okay? So first the locusts, and there's the withered tree, and the people's joy was gone. Joel one thirteen says, Dress yourself in burlap and weep, you priest. Wail, you have, ser- 
you who serve before the altar, come, spend the night in burlap, you min ministers of my God. For there are no grain or wine or to offer for the temple of God. Now, that was when you look at that, it's a lots of crying, right? Have you ever been in that place? Think about that. The locusts have ate everything. Everything feels terrible in your life. Everything is gone. Everything has been eaten. Everything has been stripped away from you. Maybe you feel like that tree, like there's no fruit, like I'm just withered away. And maybe you're at a place that you're just, you know, I just at a crying, you know, and, and everything is sadness. And uh, uh, 14 says, announce a time of fasting. And so several, um, Pastor Mike talked about it yesterday. We've been talking about it. It's important that this year is a year of fasting. I want you to put that on, a year of restoration, a year of fasting. Not just, okay, Pastor Bird has called a 21-day fast at the beginning of the year, and we're ready to go. And thank the Lord we made it through the 21 days and not till next year. So sometimes that's our thought is that, okay, the 21 days is over. But, you know, I, I, as uh, Pastor Claudia was ministering this, I'm like, we have to make this more of a part of a regular a routine, or a regular part of our week. Now, as a family, we wanna call, we're going to start calling a fast as a family and believing that we're going to see restoration this year. Amen? It was weeping. Things are destroyed. Death, misery, darkness, gloom, and fears. Everybody got that picture? And, and so as we look at that, it was time to cry out to God along with fasting. And then as I go to uh, 2.12, it says a call of repentance. So everybody say repentance. In the Ampli Amplified Version, it says, therefore also now says the Lord. Everybody say turn. Keep on coming to me with all your heart. So we've got to make sure that in this state we make a turn. We're not going to stay there, right? With fasting and weeping and with mourning until every hindrance is removed and the broken fellowship is restored. I love this scripture. So look at that. Some key points. We've got to turn. We've got to keep coming, right? With all our heart. We've got to fast. We've got to cry before the Lord until every hindrance. What hindrance is in your life today? Every hindrance, everybody say, is gone. And then that last part, it says, and I am restored. How many want to be restored to what God has for you this year? Amen? Number 13, it says, rend your hearts and not your garments, and return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Everybody say gracious. Merciful. The last part is slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. And he revokes, listen to this part, his sentence of evil when it con conditions are met. And so he revokes that. How many, know, how many believe that this morning? It's time to re return to God. It's time for us to repent. And so we, yesterday we had a time that we just got on our knees a couple different times and just repenting before the Lord. So you see, you're just joining us today. It's important that we get our hearts in the right condition, that we can receive from the Lord, that we can be who God's called us to be. Amen? All right. Anybody ever had somebody give them a half-hearted apology? Yes. Look at that person next to you and say, yes. And you said it with an attitude, right? Right. How many have kids and you say, you apologize, and they apologize only because you told them to apologize, right? It was not for real, huh? Repentance is not just a matter of going through the motions, and we need to make sure that we come to God like that. True repentance, coming to the Lord and saying, God, this is where I am. This is what the locust. These are the things that I feel like has happened in my life. This is the things. This is the kind of tree that I am right now. I'm barren, Lord. I don't have any fruit. But, God, I want to be. And so I repent. You know? And so it's important that wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, you examine your heart and you say, God, I repent of this because I want to be that fruitful tree. I want to be able to impact my neighborhood, my, my uh, uh, college campus, wherever I am, my workplace. And I, I like this part. It says, repentance is not just a matter of going through the motions. We don't need to go through the motions with God. But we need to get before the Lord. We need to repent. And we need to really to cry out, like they're saying here in this, in this uh, book, cry out to him. It is an honest confession. Everybody say honest confession. And a conscious decision. I highlighted that on my thing. Honest confession, conscious decision to, to return to following God. You 
every one of us have to make a conscious decision. We're going to follow the path that God has for us. We're going to go in that uh, direction that the Lord wants us to go into. Do not take for granted God's grace, kindness, and mercy. Amen? God will be merciful to you. And uh, in uh, 2.25 and 26 in the Amplified, it says, I will restore. Now, does it say I might? Does it say I might? What does it say? I will restore or replace for you the years the locusts have eaten and the hopping locusts and the stripping locusts and the crawling locusts. My great army, which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. How many believe that promise? I want you to make sure you highlight that in your phone, highlight that in your Bible. It says you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied he, that he is going to restore back to you. How many believe that today? The things, when you look at your life, the things that, that maybe you feel like you missed out on. You know, when Pastor Mike was just kind of talking about that, you know, that we are, we're grateful that we have models that we can model after, that our kids can be a lot uh, further uh, uh, advanced in the uh, working out, working for the Lord than what we were at 40 as we've just started. So uh, it's important that we uh, take this word and that we apply it to our life every day. Amen? He promises to repay you this year where restoration will come in. He's promised to repay us, right? When we repent, we say, Jesus, forgive us of those things. Today, I will conquer. Amen? Restoration. What's restoration mean? It means returning something to the former owner. And you think about the, what Jesus did on that cross for us, that uh, spear in the side, that restoration for every relationship. And so I can look throughout the, the um, congregation. And I, can, I can see. I could point out and say, I see how God restored that. I see how God restored that. I see how God restored that. I believe God is restoring that. I believe that salvation is going to come to that child. I believe that that restoration is going to happen. Amen? In 28, it says, And afterwards I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Do you believe that? Declare that. Highlight that. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. Now, what does that first word say? Everybody say, whoever. Tell the person next to you, that means me. That means you. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be delivered, right, and saved. No matter how desperate your situation, God's promise is sure. He saves and delivers whoever calls upon him. Amen? So I have a couple of points here I want you to write down. Number one, sin requires repentance. Have we all sinned? Do we all have sin in our life? So we need to what? Everybody say repent. Number two is continual sin and lack of repentance leads to God's judgment. Continual sin and lack of repentance leads to God's judgment. When I read that, I, I thought about what Pastor Pearson spoke or preached to us on, on Sunday's message. Satan is gathering the evidence. That was a good visual for me. I'm a visual learner. I like to see that. And when he got that file folder and it had all that stuff in it, that's just how Satan's doing. He's, got, he's getting evidence against you, isn't he? He's compiling that evidence. And he, oh, she, she messed this up. Oh, he messed that up. All that, yep, did you see that? And he's compiling that so that he has, he's setting up a case against us, isn't he? He has your file ready, but then what happens? We repent. We come to God. We have a, a heart of repentance. And because of that heart of repentance, what happens? It's gone. He's cleared it. There's no case. True repentance cancels out every argument. And so with this, as I'm talking about this today, that's why it's so important to, in, to, in order to have the restoration that we have the true repentance. God does execute judgment, but he also brings restoration is number three. God does execute judgment, but he also brings restoration. And then number four. God is the God of restoration, exclamation point. 
when I think about the locusts and stuff, just a, a personal testimony, I think about uh, probably about year, the year 2015, 2014, and I remember at a place that it seemed like it was just one thing after another. Anybody ever had a year like that? Like, oh my goodness, just one thing after another is coming. And in this year, uh, Pastor Mike uh, had uh, got a blood infection and was very sick. And um, I can remember sitting there and, and um, the church was going on. The church grew, you know, that the... Uh, while he was out, yeah, you know, the church went on. We have a wonderful team and a family that that uh, has the heart of the Lord and has the the vision, and so nothing was missing here. But I remember sitting in that that hospital room and them taking him back, and I'm like, God, at 50, I'm not ready to lose him. So I believe in your healing power, and so I just remember sitting there at that place and 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 trusting the Lord, Lord. Yeah, I know you didn't bring us this far for him to, to go at this point. So that was a, a health issue that was going on. And then at that point, all our, our parents were, were ill. Our, we were taking care of our parents. And so uh, if you ha- are in that place or if you've been in that place of trying to take care of elderly parents and having a family and trying to juggle that, it's a hard place to be in, in two different uh, uh, worlds with, with parents that are needing help and um, my mom broke her neck. There were several different things that happened throughout that that I'm like, dear Lord, are you, are you, have you forgotten us? You know, I felt like saying that, but um, kept going on. And then we had a house fire, and that was one of the, the last things in that, that series of, of, of events that were happening. I, uh, my father passed in that, and um, as the uh, house fire came and, and Michaela and I ran out, I'm like, dear Lord, how much more? So that's just a, just a little thing I wanted to throw in there, that we all go through t- things in our life that we feel like, this is a lot, right? But God has not forgotten us. Well, when we call on him and we, we say, God, I need you in this place, he's going to bring you through that. And so that's a little bit of my story that I would tell. The other part of my story that I would tell is say that I had uh, two parents, and if you've been around and you've heard this story, but I feel like this goes with the restoration. Um, uh, my mom and dad were separated from, from start, from, my, from birth. I don't have any um, remembrance of them together. And, but I always I loved my dad, even though my dad wasn't around. I always prayed for him. And, I had, and he had a mother that said that declared, that prophesied. When we talk about the prophesied, prophesied, your, your dad will return to your mom before he dies. That was what she always prayed. And my, my grandmother went on and I kept praying. I'm like, I don't see it. I don't have the clear vision to see what's going to happen, but I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe that. And so short story is at 80 years old, when my mom had some dementia, my dad came back to my mom. The marriage was restored and they lived two and a half years together before he went on to know the Lord. God is the God who will restore even when you can't see it. And um, he's going to restore marriages and families. And, and Joel 1.3 says, and I, this is what Pastor Claudia started off with, and I want to kind of bring this to, down to the end of mine. It says, tell your children about it in the years to come, and let your children tell their children. Pass the story down from generation to generation. God has done amazing things in each of our lives. And if I went through every story, uh, we would see how God has healed, how God has restored, how he has provided finance when it didn't make sense. And so it's important that you tell your story to your family. What's your story? What has God done? So we've got to make a determination today that, you know what, I am going to repent. I don't want, I want the story that I tell my kids to be a story, a model that they can follow. Amen. And um, so I think about that, pouring that into the next uh, generation, being a strong family, having a model. And, and I just want you to put that picture up that I asked you to put up of our family. This is a, we uh, did this on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, this is a picture of all of our gang. Um, we are, uh, our girl squad is very large. And uh, we're wondering if we're going to get two boys or make our girl squad a squad of 12. That's what we would be if we get two more girls. But uh, in that, you know, that, that I love seeing that because in that I can say restoration in, in so many areas. But there's, there's another little guy, another guy in there uh, that you'll see, uh, and that's Walter. 
Walter, where are you? Are you around here somewhere? He's probably working somewhere. Where is he? Okay, he's missing. <laughs> I know I know he's here somewhere, but he's probably working somewhere. But anyway, Walter um, uh, is the person in that picture that says, remember all your spiritual children. It's not just about, oh, my Lord. This is a weeping. I'm like, why am I talking about weeping? And this, this whole thing of Joel is about weeping. I'm like, I, I, that comes very easy to me. <sighs> but um, it just rep- he represents all the spiritual children. So it's not just my little family, but he represents. I just caught a glimpse of somebody crying, and I did not need to see that. <sighs> Goodness sake. Um. It just represents all the spiritual children. So it's not just about the written houses. (laughs) But it's about our spiritual children. I think... uh, Pastor Charney, one of them we're talking about, like when you're modeling, the, look at the different things that you're, the different uh, people that you're raising up, the different families you're raising up. So he represents a couple of things, all of our spiritual children. He represents the, the, the children here that don't have a model. That's so important that we do what God's called us to do and be who God's called us to be, to be that representative. So that they have that model so they can raise their family. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Let's see where I am. All right. Uh, So then I just wanted to add in here about family cell. Over the last couple of years, we've had several people um, in our homes. Jared's had them in his homes. Justin's had them in his home their homes. They, we've just been taking people in that don't have that, that role model, that, that model to, to follow after and to show them, like, this is what it looks like to live a life with Jesus. Now, are we perfect? No, because I'm sure that you could ask the ones that have lived with us and like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, nor- we're, we're normal people and we don't always make the right thing, but, but we brought them in our home to see, and so, like, I, we've had Autumn, and I'm like, it's important that we have family cell with Autumn so that we can show her this is what family cell looks like, so when she ha- gets married and goes, goes and has her children, she has that role model, so that is really what I want to get across today, is that we all need to examine ourselves, repent before the Lord, and believe that this is going to be the year of restoration for each of our families, so that we can model, so that we can bring many, many more families. This is the year, and I want to just, just show this real quick. I'm a visual, and, and uh, with my, our ladies, uh, we did it, vision boards. And so that's what I look at every day. Um, I, you know, they were talking about uh, in school and how when you get older, you say, yeah, I got A's and B's. Well, I know very well I did not get A's and B's. I was the C student. And so I'm a visual learner, and I like to, you know, to th- look at things in front of me. So every morning, this is where... I do my devotion because I get distracted. And so if I can see it, I can pray it. And, and uh, Pastor Charnay, you know, she's like, you know, write the scriptures down. Pray, pray the word. You know, so I have a book back here. It says, follow your dreams. That I write the scriptures in. I write down the dreams. So I'm just showing you those things of practical things that you can do in your life that will help you have the right vision. And so when I look at this, I see that arc. Remember that if you're around in 3C, you've been, we've been talking about all of our family is going to be in the ark. It's going to be a year of restoration because they're all going to be in there. That's my two babies that are uh, in the womb that I'm believing that are going to be healthy and strong in July. But that doesn't just represent them. It represents all those uh, ladies that I'm praying for. That's go- I'm believing that they will have a baby. They are going to uh, get pregnant, the ones that are believing for that. I have a lot of names. Amen? Yeah, so when I look at this, I'm like, not only is it just for my family, but it's for, for my team. You know, my team is here. I'm praying over our family. I'm praying over these where our uh, hands are, and you see the, uh, our family in the back. That represents all those singles. Singles, where are you? Stand up. Singles, stand up. You know, we, we did this yesterday. Come on. 
Now I'm going to do what they did in, in Columbia. Now I want you to look around while you're standing up. Look around and find the person. That's what they did in Columbia. Look around. They're right here. They could be right here. Yeah? There you go. I gave it to you, right? <laughs> but I'm believing for that. So that's just some visual things that I, that I do. You know, when we're talking about 2020 vision, that's one of the practical things I do. It's like, put it. Okay, now we've got to get come back together. Okay. That's just some practical things that, that have worked for me. Do what works for you. You know, maybe it's just a dream journal. Maybe you just want to write down some things. But it's important that you have the right vision this year. And that as we're praying, we, we uh, are praying the, the word. Amen? And then the last part I want to put on here is I put repentance. Ask God for your open to open your eyes. And here's some bullet points you can just write down there. We've got to remove all the sin from our life. Everybody say, remove all the sin. Number two. What did I do with my other thing? There it is. Remove the smudge from your lenses. Now, when you came in today, everybody should have got a lens white. It was supposed to be put underneath your chair. I think it was put on your chair. So some of you may have sat on it, lost it, opened it. Anyway, anybody got one of these? Hold it up. This is a visual for me. And so I'm going to put it up here on my 2020 vision. I'm going to put that lens white because I allow things to cloud my vision. And daily I need to make sure I get this lens wipe out. So I put on there 2020, whatever, whatever works for Maybe you just want to use it and throw it away. But maybe you want to put this somewhere. You want to put it in your wallet, put it in your car, want to put it on your mirror. Like, okay, Lord, remind me. I need to have the right vision this year. I need that clear vision. And um, so that's going to remove the smudge, smudges. And this also reminds me of that sometimes we, there's things in our life that we need other people to point out to us because we've become so accustomed to looking at it, we don't even see it anymore. And I think that's the importance of having leaders in our life, that sometimes we need them to come because we're praying, we pray for our leaders, we pray for our pastors, that's all my board. Every day I pray for my pastors. We're praying for the wisdom and the knowledge of your word. Lord, fill them. So as they lead us, Lord, let them help, help them with the, the wisdom. And so we, uh, Pastor Mike looked at my computer, and I look at this computer all the time. He is the perfectionist in the family. He wants everything just right when he... Anyway, he's a perfectionist anyway. So he looked at my computer. He's like, that computer is dirty. I'm like, it is? <laughs> and so I looked at him like, oh, yeah, I guess it is. He said, how do you even look at that? So it just reminded me of this as I was, te- as, as I was preparing this. Like, we need people in our life to point out like, hey, that's, hey you're allowing that in your life. You, you need to clean that out, you know. And so um, I just put on there. Remove the blinders from my eyes. Remove those smudges from my lenses. And um, get out a spiritual scanner of prayer. And so fasting and prayer is important that as we walk through this life, as we walk through the repentance, as we see restoration, we're fasting and we're praying. Amen? So we got to make sure that we get in the right position. Look at your neighbor and say, what position are you in? Are you in the recliner laid back? Spiritually, oh, I'm just relaxing here, right? What position is it? Tell the person next to you what position you're in. Okay? Are you set up? You're ready to go? I fasted and prayed. I pray, prayed up. I've had my devotion, and I'm ready for the day, Right? So we got to make sure that we're in the right position. And that's what this conference is all about, hearing, hearing what everybody said yesterday and today. We're positioning you in the place that you're ready to go. That when you walk out of here, when we had our anointing Sunday, that's what I, as we prayed and they walked out, I'm like, okay, we're positioned for the year. We're ready to go. Amen? And I've been talking about telling a story. This next story I'm going to tell is not my story. But it's a story of somebody that's right here. This is what I got from this person yesterday morning. Good morning. I just wanted to tell you how grateful I am for you in my life. 
I may have lost my son, but I'm fighting like Pastor Mike said. I'm going to be a world changer. I have 13 people coming to the conference. It goes on to say, I'll tell you a little bit of it. She lost her son. They lost their son on Thanksgiving Day. Now, you can calculate that. It's been about two and a half months since that point. She has dove into the vision. She did not make this. Now, that is a bad day. I can't imagine what that's like. But I have a friend now that's gone through it, and now I'm watching her go through it and win. And so that's the important that when we feel like we're at this place, when we feel like we're at this place that the locusts have come in and they've ate everything. Like, Lord, I don't know what to do. And uh, people around her might would say, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to stay here. But she took this, and she has thrown herself into the vision. Let me see what else I've got here about her. I sent her a message, and so she gave me permission to tell the story. She has made sure everyone is going to sell. Just as soon as we started sales back, she's like, okay, I got somebody in sale. And I said, Terry? How about you? She said, I'm going. I'm going. And she went, and she's taken uh, many with her. And, and last night I looked, and she had 13 in that second row right there. Two of them came up for salvation. <laughs> I just wanted to add this about the vision. Um, it has given her life. Terry, will you stand so they can just kind of see who this is Terry. She's a winner. She's a world changer. And uh, so I said to her uh, two weeks ago, she's like, I got this one. Look, I got this one, this one. Every week, I said, we're going to have to just get a Terry Tanner row because she, every week she's got somebody. And so we need to have that inspiration in us. Now, we don't want to go what she went through, but she's used that as to be a tool to like, you know what? I'm not just sitting here. I'm going to bring many to Jesus. And right here in this room, as we had his funeral, many came to know Jesus. She, we did an altar call, and many of them are still around and still here. So um, I, it's important that if you're going through that locust time, that everything's eaten, I don't know what I'm going to do, Jesus, that we look to Jesus, that we get the lens wipes out. We have a clear vision to see, okay, Lord, let me see through your eyes. Let me lift up my eyes. Let me, let me look over this whole situation. You remember what Pastor Jerry and I talked about, our eyesight, insight. And, and to pray that, Lord, give me that, that sight that I, that I can see through your eyes. Amen? And um, the last part of, of this that I wanted to share with about Terry, she sent me this, and this is right with the vision. She said, Jordan, my son Brian was on, Jordan and my son Brian was on Cody. Cody is her son that passed. Prayer three, both attending Rob's cell now. And so, Rob, where are you? Are you here? Rob's right over here. So her son that passed had a prayer of three. Two of them are in his cell now as a result of that. And then she said, and his third one was Ben Mason's son, and he came up here last night and gave his heart to the Lord. The vision works. Amen? Tell the person next to you, the vision works. Help me to have the right insight, right? To have the right vision. And I just, uh, if the, the band would come. I'm a little earlier, I think. Then. Just want you to begin to uh, just examine yourself. You guys can go ahead and let's stand. We've got to get ourselves in the right position. Situations that happen, we, have to, we can make a choice. We can s decide to stay in that situation and let it change us for the bad. Or we can s make a choice to say, I will stand up. I will do what God's called me to be. I will be a world changer. 
And with that, I said to Terry, and now you're going to take them on Sunday, and we're going to follow, they're going to follow you right to life class. And then destiny training, right? And she's going to have this time next year, she'll have a whole 12. Amen? And so that's what I see for her. Do you, and the same thing, do you see it for yourself? Do you believe it? Maybe you've been sitting here year after year. This is your year, a year of restoration in every area of your life, restoration of relationships, restoration of your finances, restoration of, uh, of healing in your body. Amen? So I just want you to, to bow your heads, and I just want you to begin to examine yourself. The first thing I want to talk about is the locusts have come and stolen from you. Today, you claim that promise that you will be restored. We read the word. The word is true. The num number two I wrote down here, maybe it's your story. Maybe you need to tell it. Maybe you need to make some changes in that so that as you tell the story to your children, that they can be the role model that God's called them to be. You, you get, need to have that boldness. Number three is that your vision has become blurred and cloudy. You've not been able to see the way that God wants you to see. We're just going to take a time and just repent before the Lord. So I just want you just to begin to pray right where you are. Lord, examine me today. Come on, just begin to pray to him. It's important that we repent where we are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One of those areas, if you feel like that you're that the locusts have come, maybe you're that tree that's barren, maybe you haven't been telling your story, or maybe your vision is blurred. I just want you to lift up your hands and just surrender to the Lord today. Come on, let's put those hands up. And then as you begin to repent, your hands are all the way up as like a funnel, and He's pouring down upon you, pouring down, pouring down His Holy Spirit, cleaning you out. Just want you to visualize that. As you've repented, begin to thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you today, Lord. Our hands are raised. My hands are raised, Lord. Lord, we want to be able to tell our story. We want to be able to tell it from generation to generation. But God, we want to make sure that our eyes are fixed on you. Lord, those that feel like they're in a place, God, that the locusts have come and everything has been stripped away life has beat them down today Jesus we lift up our hands we repent we ask you God to uh, forgive us God we turn we make an effort to turn the other way today we see we feel we know you're working in us Lord those God that have a vision God that is blurred We've not been able to see, Lord, the way that you want us to see today, God. We choose, God, to have the clear vision, 2020 vision. Every day, we, we will begin, God, with you, Lord. Lord. We will visualize, God, our family saved. We visualize our children coming to know you. We visualize our children preaching your word. We visualize, Lord, God, ourselves filled, disciples, Lord, disciple makers, Lord. We visualize this place, Lord, filled every service, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, today. We thank you, Lord. I want us just to sing this song. It's a declaration. He's a way maker. It says, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop working. So even if when you don't see it, you can't see it, it looks like it's... A, a land, the locusts have come. He's working. 
I want you to tell the person next to you, he's working. He's going to work it out. And I want us to sing this. I want us to declare it. I want us to believe it today. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's do the clear. Miracle song, miracle song, abres camino, cumples promesas. Stop working, you never stop. Never Come on, down. let's declare it now. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Jesus, salvation for all of our family, God. Lord, our nieces, our nephews, our aunts, our uncles, our children, our parents will be in the ark this year. A year of restoration in Jesus' name. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it out. next you can sing that. Yeah. 
this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. As if what you were visualizing has just happened. Let's exalt the Lord this morning. Salvations, healings, addictions are broken. Sons and daughters are back preaching the word. Your whole house in the ark. Amen. Do you see it? Do you believe it? A year of restoration. Declare it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Year of restoration. Yeah. Amen. I just wanted to, to close with this last thing. This is a, another model uh, of a family right here in um, 3C, how God has changed their life. And so that's what we, throughout the weekend, we want to show you that, that there's models of how uh, we're modeling after what Jesus looks like. And we're believing that for your house too. Amen? Amen.